How's it going, my confident bunch of bakers? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'll show you how to make very uniquely shaped baguettes. So let's get in the kitchen and get started. Pan de api is a type of baguette. The process of preparing it, up until the point where it's scored and baked, is identical to the process of baguette making. This bread is scored using scissors, which create this beautiful wheat stalk shape. The unique scoring method creates more surface area, resulting in a super crispy crust, which make it a perfect accompaniment to a soup or a stew. This is not the first video about this type of bread on my channel, but since I'm updating all my old recipes, I had to update this one too. And I'm sure you can already guess that there is no kneading and it's cold fermented. And as a bonus, at the end of this video, I will show you how to make regular baguettes using the same dough. But for now, let's get on with the eppies. Here are the ingredients that we need. White bread flour, yeast, salt and water. Yes, it really is that simple. When it comes to equipment, we'll need a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, a temperature probe, and a pair of scissors for scoring. And we are keeping it simple when it comes to baking. A large baking tray lined with non-stick paper is all we need. No baking stones, no baking steel. I'm trying to make it accessible. But the spray bottle with water will really come in handy for creating that crispy crust. So if you don't have one of these, get yourself one. It is very affordable and it's super useful. Right, let's begin. And it all starts with temperature control. My kitchen is around 23 degrees Celsius or 74 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm using water that's slightly cooler. As we mix the dough, it should warm up by a couple degrees. Get in a large bowl, combine the water, the yeast, the salt, give it a quick mix, and then add the flour, grab a dough scraper, and mix it to a dough. When it comes to temperature control during cold fermentation, you don't want to make the dough too cool. If it's around 20 degrees or lower, it will take forever to rise. I recently experimented with different temperatures and cold fermentation. I tried to cold ferment the dough, which was 18 degrees Celsius or 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Even after two days in the fridge, it had not risen. So if your dough ever turns out cooler, leave it out at room temperature for half an hour or up to an hour before refrigerating it. But if your dough turns out too warm, you should give it a fold sooner after you place it in the fridge. At around 23 degrees Celsius or 74 Fahrenheit, my dough is just about right. So I'm going to pop it in the fridge and leave it to cool down for 30 minutes. And after 30 minutes, we'll remove the dough from the fridge and give it a fold. Folding will help the dough cool down evenly and quickly, and it will build some tension. This dough is not sticky, so it doesn't require any flour, and you can fold it up in the air to keep your table clean. So pick the dough ball up, fold the sides down, and then push them back into the middle of the dough, whilst going around in a circle. It's like you're folding it on the table but upside down. Once the dough ball is nice and tight, place it back into the bowl and leave the cold ferment for 18 to 24 hours. It is the next day, the dough has puffed up beautifully. Now we can weigh it, divide it and pre-shape it. You could of course divide it just by eyeballing it, but I like consistency, so I pretty much always weigh the dough before dividing it. In my previous baguette videos, I used to suggest that the dough should be pre-shaped in a cylinder shape. But I decided to simplify this recipe and try something different, and it works. So instead of shaping in cylinders, just shape it into round balls. Dust the dough with flour, flatten it out, fold the edge over the middle, go around in a circle to reach point where it started. Then flip it smooth side up again, tighten it against the table, finally pick it up and pinch the seam together at the bottom. And yes, you want to shape it quite tight. We will let the dough rest for quite some time before we do the final shaping. Because the dough is cold, we can afford to let it rest for so long. So once it's all shaped up, dust it with some flour, cover it with cling film and leave it to sit on the table for 45 minutes. And now we are ready to do the final shaping. And here I also decided to simplify the baguette shaping method at least relative to the one I used to do before. Dust the dough ball with flour, place it on the table with a smooth side down and flatten it out. Give it a tapered shape, with a narrower top and a wider bottom. And now all you need to do is roll it up nice and tight, starting from the top down to the bottom. If the dough gets a bit narrow, pull it out sideways and keep rolling. Once you have reached the bottom, pinch the seam together, and then gradually and evenly roll it out to about 30 centimeters one foot long. Once you're happy with the length, taper the ends by sliding your hands against the table at around a 30 degree angle with the ends of the dough underneath them. I sure hope that made sense. If you have tried my previous baguette recipes, then I'm sure you can see how much simpler the shaping method is. Okay, once you've shaped your baguette, take note of where the seam is and place the dough on the non-stick paper lined baking tray with the seam side down. Then shape the second baguette and we'll be ready for final proofing. And yes, at the moment, it's still a baguette. It'll become an epi when we score it and bake it. Because yeast starts to become quite active after cold fermentation, and because the dough has spent already 45 minutes at room temperature, the final proof will be very quick. For me, it took around 30 minutes. My kitchen was around 24 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Fahrenheit at this point. 
so keep an eye on these bad boys. They will all ferment pretty quickly. Make sure you give enough time to preheat the oven also. You want to heat it up to 250 degrees Celsius, 480 Fahrenheit fan on. We're not going to bake at this temperature, but we need the oven to be extra hot to get a nice quick rise. Okay, these slim boys have puffed up pretty well. They are ready for the oven. We just need to score them now. Dust them with flour to prevent the scissors from sticking. And here goes. Place the cuts at around a 30 to 45 degree angle, 2.5 cm or 1 inch apart. Fold the segment of dough to the opposite side after each cut. There are other creative ways that you could do this. You could alternate between shallower cuts and deeper cuts creating larger or smaller segments. You could cut each segment one more time. Or you could cut the dough from one side and fold all the segments in that direction. And you could sprinkle some seeds on them as well. But whatever you do, spray these spiky boys down with water before you place them in the oven. This will allow them to rise better and make the crust extra crispy. Ok, let's get these things in the oven. They'll take around 20 minutes to fully bake. As soon as you close the oven door, be sure to turn the temperature down to 210 degrees Celsius or 410 degrees Fahrenheit. Once they're nicely golden brown all over, they're ready. And there you have it. Here's a super easy way to make pan de pea, extra crispy wheat stalk shaped baguettes. If you want to make them extra beautiful, you can brush them with some olive oil. This will not only make them nice and shiny, it will also add a bit of richness and flavor. As with baguettes, these should be eaten fresh. Breads, which have a high crust to crumb ratio, stale really quickly. And these epis have got even more crust than a baguette. So bake them and eat them right away. They are perfect for sharing. Place this on the table and just let people pick segments off one by one. Or if you're greedy like me, just munch a whole one by yourself. I'm not gonna judge. Okay, let's move on to making the regular baguettes, which I promised earlier. As I said, the process is identical up until scoring time. To score baguettes, you'll need a curved razor blade, ideally. Imagine that there is a 1 inch wide line running down the baguette. Cut the dough at an angle, keeping those cuts within that line. And you want to overlap the cuts by about one third. Using a curved razor blade will make the dough fold up, creating that distinct ear shape. After scoring, just as previously, spray the dough down with water and get it in the oven. The baking time and temperature is exactly the same as with the epi. And there you go, that's why we make super simple baguettes. They are beautiful, flavorful and crusty. They don't have the most open crumb because the hydration is relatively low. I had to work with the limits of baking them on a regular baking tray and proofing them with the steam side down. If you want a more open crumb and even crispier baguettes, then you can follow my previous baguette video and increase the hydration slightly. Like I said in this video, I try to keep things as simple as possible and the result is very good in relation to the effort that is put in. Let me know what you think of these breads down in the comments. But that will be all for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.